Hey, man, are you setting up your time-based effects all wrong in Pro Tools? <laughs> oh, man, let me show you how to get them reverbs, delays, and more set up properly. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com, and this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Today, I got a great little video to show you how to properly set up your time-based effects like reverbs, delays, chorus effects, how to properly use those in Pro Tools, all right? Now, before we get started, I do want to point out that there are two main categories of effects. We have our game-based or dynamic style effects, and then we also have time-based effects. The game-based dynamic effects will include stuff like EQs, compression, de -esser, um, limiters, all of those are game based processors and those should be applied directly to each individual track for the maximum effect. But on the other end, for reverbs, delays, even chorus effects, doublers, those type of effects work best when they're blended in with our dry signal. So we're going to set those up as a send and return. Let's go over to Pro Tools so we can show exactly what we mean. So guys, as you learned in my previous how to apply compression video, we learned that compressors, de and other game based processors actually need to be applied as an insert so that they can affect the entire signal. So here I just got my compressor up. I'm just going to do a this little compression type of love from the ground up. Brick by brick, we built a house that they can't get in. Built a life that will never end. It was written. Okay, and now that is affecting the entire signal. When I want to add some reverb, I don't just want to go to the insert selector of this channel and go ahead and apply a reverb like this D verb, for example. The reason being this type of love from the ground up is that as you can hear, that reverb completely takes over the whole signal and I'm not getting my balance between the dry signal and the wet signal that I started with. Now, yes, a lot of time-based effects will have a mix control, which will allow you to blend between the wet and dry signal. So I could do something like this. This type of love from the ground up. But to me, that's still not giving me the effect I want. I want my full bodied vocal to remain. And then I also want to be able to affect how my reverb sounds. Right now, I don't have any control over how the actual reverb itself sounds. I can't just EQ the reverb alone. I'll be EQing this entire channel. So this is not a way that I want to apply any time-based effects. No delays, no reverbs, nothing like that, unless I'm going for some super special reverbed out effect, okay? This is the way that you should properly set it up. First, you need to set up a return channel, right? It's all about ascend and return. Think about this idea as coming from a console. If we were working with an analog console, and let's say this yellow piece of hardware here, let's say that that is my reverb unit, I would want to send signal out from my console over to the reverb unit and then take the output of that reverb unit and return it back to my Pro Tools or my recording medium. Maybe I'm recording the tape or whatever, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is just go ahead and create my device and this is gonna be my return channel. And um, to do this in Pro Tools, you just wanna make a stereo aux input track and you can name it reverb, you can name it delay, name it whatever type of effect that you wanna go with. I'm gonna name this one reverb. Once I have that reverb channel set, Next thing I'm going to do is just actually go ahead and insert the reverb plugin here. Okay. So I'm going to use my Dverb plugin. I got that inserted. Now, what we need to do is route signal from our vocal channel over into this reverb plugin or onto this reverb track. We do this by using the sins. Okay. And you can do this from either the mix or the edit window, but I'm just showing you today in the edit window. Hey man, if you love my YouTube channel, then you'll really love the Wavy Seals Elite. The Wavy Seals Elite is a membership group that offers you way more than you can get on YouTube. Not only do you get one-on-one -on -one communication with me at least once or twice a week through our live lessons, Q and A's, but we also have multi-track practice sessions, two-track practice sessions. I'll be bringing along other experts because I don't know everything. So every month we have monthly masterclasses where you get to learn from an expert in the field. We give each other feedback on mixes and help each other problem solve issues in the studio. As a member of the Wavy Seals Elite, you'll also get access to an amazing community of audio engineers and producers who are all learning and building with each other. 
there's two membership opportunities for the Wavy Shields Elite. You can choose monthly or annual membership. If you're ready to take your skills to the next level and really grow your career in audio production, the Wavy Shields Elite is what you're looking for. So we're gonna go from the sins. I'm gonna click on any sin selector, choose a bus. A bus is an internal pathway, which allows us to get signal from one track to another. I'm gonna choose a bus that's not being used. And then now that I have this bus set up and I'm able to send signal along that bus, I need to assign that same bus as the input to this reverb track. So I'm gonna go to the input path selector here. Let's just go over to the mix window so we can see that this is all the same. I have my sends sending along bus one and two, all right? And then I wanna bring bus one and two as the input to my reverb channel. Now with this send, you'll notice that when you create a send, a send level slider pops up, right? A little send level window. And I can bring this fader up to determine how much of my original signal am I sending over to this effects channel. Let's hear it as I turn it up. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. But we built this type of love from the ground up. And in this case, I have all of the abilities to control my reverb effect, and I still have complete control over the main vocal as well. A good technique to apply when you are using reverb is to actually place an EQ right before that reverb. And then I'm gonna use a filter, the high pass filter, and roll off a lot of the lows. And I'm gonna use another uh, low pass filter to roll off some of my highs here. And what this is gonna do is trying to keep that uh, reverb from interfering with my vocal and help it to sit very uh, uh, well in my mix. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. <laughs> but we built this type of love from the ground up. Brick by brick, we built a house that they can't get. One last tip that I'll show y'all on setting up the time based effects, especially when you're using an aux input track like this, is to solo safe. In Pro Tools, by command clicking on the solo button, this will allow you to solo safe. Now, the significances of this is that if I solo this vocal and, and I listen to it, Everybody want to feel this type You'll of love. You'll notice that the actual return track here has been muted. My reverb track has been muted because it's not soloed. Solo Safe allows you to, again, by command clicking on that solo button, this will allow you to solo any other track in the session, but still keep certain tracks active, like this effects track, to where I can now solo this vocal and hear it uh, alone, but also hear any effects that are associated with it. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. <laughs> but we built this type of love. This song is actually called Legendary Love. Shout out to my boo, Lydia Caesar. I'll leave the link to this song and its full mix down in the description below. Check it out. Y'all be dope.